for it. Let's look at Antoine Davis on the other side. What a career it's been for this young man. I don't even know where to begin. The Horizon Player Preseason Player of the Year for the third time. The Horizon Player Player of the Year last year. Four-time first-team All-Horizon League and playing for his dad, Mike Davis, in this his grad year. Should be fun to watch. Scored 28 points in the season opener for Detroit Mercy. A victory over Rochester College in Michigan by a final of 93-65. Titans and Eagles. And should be fun here on this Friday afternoon. First chance for Prince Alipe. Out for Madsen, the transfer from Cincinnati. And eight to shoot early for Boston College. Makai Ashton Langford, a little bit strong of the three. And first rebound belongs to Demisi Anderson, the grad student from South Bend, Indiana. A ton of transfers on this Detroit Mercy roster. Yeah, eight in total, six coming in this past year, but two from previous years, three true freshmen. So in total, 11 newcomers. Three ball, Jaden Stone is good. The junior from Perth, Australia, who comes in as a transfer from Grand Canyon University, where he spent the last couple of years and set a career high with 15 points in the opener against Rochester. That's what they're going to need, some outside shooting, some presence to get the load off of Antoine Davis. Zachary inside, a foul called. It is a block. Well, for Boston College, you can't get into the three-point shooting contest, so good job by Zachary to just go attack the hoop, draw the foul, almost a three-point play there, but good vision there for the point guard. Foul goes against A.J. Oliver. Let's talk more about Antoine Davis. Comes in 21st all-time in NCAA history and career points. Next on the list is J.J. Redick. He's seven points away from tying J.J. for 20th on the all-time scoring list. He gets to 3,000 this year, which if he continues at that pace, would be just the 11th player ever to reach 3,000 career points. Chasing down Pistol Pete. Right. Zachary. Two free throws for Boston College. Eagles who struggled a tad at the line on Monday, just 54% from the strike. And a little bit of early pressure defense from the sophomore point guard. But a nice job getting all the way to the rim and home for Jordan Phillips. The senior from Fort Worth, Texas, who comes to Detroit, started his career at Arkansas before playing the last few years at UT Arlington. And he had had a battle, an injury last year, Eric, where he played the first three games of the year, but he didn't play the rest. That's how to play. But okay. just a good play there by Phillips to take it to the hoop and and finished his play. Even with the contact, he beats Jaden Zachary, and then the help side defense is there a little too late. Phillips at six foot seven, played just three games last year before his season ending injury. So he's a big piece to have back for Detroit Mercy. Three ball, Anderson off front rim and out of bounds over towards the Boston College bench. There is Earl Grant in his second season. Earl bucking the trend and going back to the suits, which is definitely in the minority of what we've seen from college basketball coaches, but I like it. Well, how about that tie? You and I were talking about our ties before today. I, I gotta go get his dresser. Vickers staff, what a game it was in the opener. Got the second tap, maybe even a third and a fourth, and muscling his way up, but could not finish. Blocked at the rim by Demisi Anderson. Yeah, he wanted a foul there, didn't get it, but good job just staying with the play. Demisi Anderson stays alive and keeps this play alive for Detroit now the other way. Makai Ashton Langford, close defense against Davis. This is Jaden Stone, a three-pointer knockdown already. Seven to shoot, Detroit Mercy. Oliver got rid of it, Anderson. Back for Oliver, three to shoot, and the three is long. Rebound to Zachary. You would have to think this game is going to be played at a slower tempo than what we saw in Boston College's first game against Cornell. There's Madsen, Edward to the 10. Mason Madsen, his first two. It's a product out of Rochester, Minnesota, and he transfers over from Boston College from Cincinnati. And he's trying to see some early action here to develop some time in the lineup. First shot, Davis is good. Antoine Davis. He has scored in double figures 
in every game of his college career. 112 in a row. Yeah, the record's 115, Eric, in two more games. Three more games, actually, you can tie that record at 115. Here's Earl Grant once more in his second season. We talked a lot about this in the opener and with Earl before that game. And the fact that one week last year in the ACC tournament, and it just totally changes the feel and the perception of the program going forward. And then even a win on Monday night in a game that there's definitely some things to clean up, especially on the defensive end. And Earl Grant talked about how that game was really paid at a pace that doesn't fit his team, felt more like at Cornell's pace. But you still feel the positive momentum even after that win. Well, yeah, you talk about the run in the ACC tournament, falling to Miami, a one-point loss, that just one point away from the ACC semifinals. And, you know, a lot of the kids coming back, 70% of the scoring for BC, they knew what they had and they knew what the program was looking forward to. So Earl Grant's trying to build and establish the Boston College program. Victor staff inside and was fouled. And if that's Oliver, that's already three fouls on A.J. Oliver. He just picked up his second, was not subbed out. They had brought someone to the scorer's table to bring in. And the foul indeed is against Oliver, and that is three fouls less than four minutes into the game. And perhaps more importantly, though, Prince Alife for Boston College is a little bit slow to come off on the other end. Yeah, it looks, Eric, like just some contact below the hoop. You're going to see the drive. Alibe goes up, looks like he might land on an ankle there. He does, actually lands on his own teammate's ankle coming down. So, hope it's nothing too serious. He'll be attended to in the locker room as they head through the tunnel. I certainly hope Prince Alibe is okay, able to walk off under his own powers. The free throw from Bicker's staff is good. So you're talking about Eric, A.J. Oliver, you know, getting in foul trouble. They need A.J. Oliver out on the floor. One of those guards that's at 6'5 to help support Antoine Davis in scoring and finding and spacing out the floor. Baker staff one of two at the foul line. So a 7'5 Detroit Mercy Lee on possession. Stone guarded by Bickerstaff. Size advantage there for BC, but Stone step back, three ball, a little bit short, but the follow-up by TJ Moss was blocked at the rim by CJ Pena. What a debut it was on Monday for Pena, 15 points. I believe Madsen also got a piece of that one, Eric, so a little support. Makai Ashton Langford steps into the three, no. Offensive rebound, though, Bickerstaff around Madsen again. And short again on the three, but got a long rebound. Now it's Zachary's turn from behind the arc. And that one off the mark. But another offensive board, and it's Bickerstaff into the 10. Oh, how about that English, Eric? A nice little move. Good aggressive rebounding by Bickerstaff so far. He's been hungry for those rebounds. Eagles already with five offensive rebounds in the game. And tied once again, seven apiece. And that is an offensive foul. Screen on Anderson was whistled. What effort underneath by the eighth ranked rebounder in the ACC last year, TJ Bickerstaff. Right where he left off in the game on Monday against Cornell. Yeah, you saw that beautiful cut there to finish. He was eyes wide open throughout that game against the Big Red. Great steal there. He's going to have a great finish to the hoop here with a great offensive rebound. Last year, a career-high 17 offensive rebounds in a couple of games. This block, he sent it back to Ithaca, as you said, Eric. And I think they're still trying to track that ball down. Great start with T.J. Bickerstaff. Bickerstaff, who returned, is the fifth leading rebounder in the ACC from last year, his third career double-double on Monday night. And we've mentioned it, especially on the offensive boards. At four of them on Monday, already four of them so far today. And he is a big impact player at six foot nine. And especially without quick post to Boston College is again without today due to a leg injury. He's going to be really important to try to fill that void inside. And he's done it so far. Here, he picks up the foul away from the ball. Well, I think last year, learning about what Earl Grant really wants in the program and, and buying into that, as you see the 
Mike Davis resume here. Mike Davis is such a great coach here in this league in the horizon. He's had a couple of stops in his career at Indiana, UAB, and Texas Southern. Yeah, folks will remember Mike Davis took over for Bobby Knight back in the early 2000s at Indiana and ended up bringing the Hoosiers to a national championship game appearance in 2002 where they lost to Maryland. And Mike's son, Antoine, knocks down the three. Another game with the three-pointer for Antoine Davis. That's 434 in his career. And seven lead for Detroit Mercy. Chaz Kelly in the game for the first time. Here's Pena, straight on. Triple, bounces around, and down. Nice friendly bounce there for Pena as he gets that open look, not afraid to shoot it. And that's the thing with this Boston College team is everybody out on the court is not afraid to take a three, and if it's open, they'll shoot it. Zachary ended up on the ground, jousting with Davis. Then Zachary got a piece. 12 to shoot. Detroit Mercy. Anderson tried to throw a pick. Got rid of it. Three ball. Phillips is a little too strong. Each team matching threes in the last two possessions. Madsen on the drive. Sends it out. Kelly. Three ball is strong. Another offensive board. Victor Staff. And then he lost it trying to go up. Got to take a little second there to see who's around you. A flood of red jerseys. Davis walks into one. Not there. It's like Davis is bleeding from the eye. Yeah, he is. Officials have not noticed it yet, so we play on. Bickerstaff inside. Got around. Almost was surprised, but it ends up with Madsen, who's off the mark from three. Eagles are just one of seven from behind the arc to start. Titans, on the other hand, just two of seven. That's and the now they, I think they notice, and we'll get the whistle out for Davis. And I think it goes back a couple of plays where TJ Bickerstaff got the rebound, tried to back down Antoine Davis. Davis ended up hitting the floor, and I think that's where that cut came from. See here, Kelly's going to... Swing it back down low towards Bickerstaff. Bickerstaff cuts through the D. It's actually a play just before that one where Bickerstaff has it in the paint. He kind of makes a, a hop step move to, to back down the defender. Davis hit the ground. And then that's kind of where they, that cut comes from on that right eye. Antoine Davis now 47 consecutive games with a three-pointer made. This is the sequence we believe. Looking for zero. And maybe right there on the rebound. Right here. Might have probably gotten a piece of him on the back down there. That's where assistant coach Mike Davis Jr. was trying to tell the officials, hey, it was on that back down. The elbow went up. Some tough cookies out here and get attended to. There's so many different accolades for Antoine Davis in his career. He is fifth all-time in terms of three-pointers made per game coming into this year. Anytime you're on a list with Steph Curry, that's pretty good. He actually broke Steph Curry's freshman record for three-pointers made in a season a couple of years ago. He's been setting records left and right ever since arriving in Detroit. Dad said he was spending this offseason working with Steph Curry's trainer, learning kind of how to develop his game a little bit more and what he can add to his repertoire. Anderson got around Pena. Three ball was short, though. Both teams struggling a bit from the floor to start this game. Here is hand out of control and out of bounds. That's good defense there by TJ Moss, putting a hand there on the drive to force that ball, alter that ball and force it out of bounds and off of the Eagles. Gonna see here, TJ Moss is gonna put that right hand in to alter that drive and hitting the floor was Donald Hand Jr. And now Donald Hand Jr. a little bit slow to get up and actually now will go to the hardwood and a scary situation there for the Boston College freshman from Virginia Beach.
will step aside while they check on hand. 10-10 game here, 12.09 remaining in the first from Conti Forum. Junior on that drive. Take a look here. Bit of a scary sight here is his knee kind of gave out. So Donald Hamp was helped off to the locker room. So Boston College is down two right now with Prince Alipe and Donald Hamp Jr. in the locker room right now. I certainly hope both of those exciting freshmen are okay as they take a peek. 10-10 game, under 12 minutes remaining here from Conti Forum, and that is a foul that will go against Madsen. As you take a look at the talented freshmen, the two prizes of Earl Grant's class, Prince Elite Bay and Donald Hand Jr. Positionally, Elite Bay is likely to be the one to get a little bit more time this year and certainly impressed as we've talked about in that opener. A lot of new recruits coming in for Earl Grant trying to put them in. Three ball, Stone is good. Second three for Jaden Stone. That ends the scoring drought both ways of over two minutes and gives Detroit Mercy a three point lead again. Kelly on the drive, gave it up Pena. Double team comes, so it's Metzen for three. It's a great play by the Eagles. Just attack the rim, open up that three point line, and Madsen's been feeling it today. It's a smooth shot on the far side. Madsen, who is brought in, kind of filled that Brevin Galloway role from last year. Three point shooter, 35% for his career at Cincinnati. To the bucket, Phillips, no. Follow up, yes. That is Bwai Coca, the grad student who came in as a transfer from Tulane, originally from South Sudan. Who went to high school at the famed the Patrick School in New Jersey. And Detroit Mercy back up two. Kelly, long three ball. He's good. Chaz Kelly with his first career points. Well, two freshmen go down, one freshman rises. That's Chaz Kelly, a big three there for the Eagles to stay this one, in, stay in this battle with Detroit Mercy. Earl Grant was really impressed with Kelly in the preseason run up to the year and how he has the ability to come in and kind of spell Zachary at the point guard position a little bit. Coca inside, ball on the ground, and taken away by the Eagles. McLaughlin was the one who got it, and then on two hops, Metzen is good! Doesn't have to look pretty. That's and little Metzen is eight. <laughs> what a shot! That's one of those where you put on the highlight reel, like, I'm just falling away, and it goes in. The old double bounce pass. Kick to Moss. Passed on the three, instead on the drive, it's out of bounds. Good defense by Kelly. Well, Matt, Madsen had 30 career games played at Cincinnati. 3.9 points per game right now, up to six points. for BC on two back-to-back -back three pointers. Eight points now for Madsen with that following three, that last three. So a mini six nothing run here for Boston College. And they've knocked down five of their last seven from the floor after starting just one of nine. Madsen off the mark this time. And Kyle LeGreer into the game the first time. The junior from Detroit has the rebound. Davis going to work against Zachary. Pull up, elbow. In and out. Davis, two of four to start, but here's a turnover. Demise Anderson got in the way. And Davis kept the handle after running hard into Madsen, but then lost it. Makai Ashton Langford on the seal and on the run, but couldn't hit the layup. And then Makai Ashton Langford tried to take it back and commits the foul. Good pace here defensively for the Eagles as Boston College keeps the hands active. Everybody knows Antoine Davis is going to try to get his looks. They keep those hands active in the paint. They cause a turnover. 
And for Antoine Davis, we, we've been talking about finding more support. It's a good, a good idea to not take those long threes anymore, right? You gotta go try to find different looks so he gets inside those, inside the arc, but just couldn't find that shot. And take a look at Armani Mighty, another freshman who did not play against Cornell, but getting some action here today. First career appearance. There is so much potential in that young man. Well, Grant says it's gonna take a little bit of time. He's gonna have to continue to play. He's only played basketball since 2017 in terms of organized ball, but has a 7-3 wingspan. So you'll take that, see if you can figure it out. Davis, offensive foul. Emphatic tap on the sideline there by Earl Grant to Zachary. That's beautiful there. And this is what Earl Grant wants. He wants defensive-minded basketball. Create turnovers, frustrate your opponents. And you see there, Antoine Davis has been trying to find a spot here on the court in the last couple of sequences. Boston Call is not giving him any room. So at least in the early going, Boston College has kept Detroit Mercy's best player a little bit out of sorts. And with that kind of score, it's kind of those little wins that's all you're kind of looking for. Because you know he's going to get his points. Zachary with 10 to shoot. And a foul. As Jaden Stone reaching around, picks up his first personal and sends us to a timeout on the floor. That 6 nothing Eagles run still holding up despite no points from the last 90 seconds or so. Davis committing the foul on one end. His team down by four. Took a while to get up. Boston College, that was Prince Alibe going down. We've been told by the Boston College Athletic Communications Department he will not return. Donald Hand, on the other hand, this one, you see him going down. He has returned to the bench area and is available to continue. So Alibe is not going to return today. Hand remains available for Earl Grant. It's a tough break for Prince Alibe, who had himself quite the game in that opener against Cornell, but Earl Grant built this roster so that he can have some players come off the bench in, in response, and we'll see who rises to the occasion here today in game two of the season for the Eagles. So under eight minutes remaining, 19-15 is the lead for Boston College. Detroit Mercy has not scored in nearly three minutes. Ashton Langford, no bigger staff, yes. And he is absolutely cleaning up on the offensive boards. That is six offensive rebounds for TJ Bickerstaff. Yeah, a lot of them have come following shots or getting set up in that paint area. Good vision of the court and a good job boxing out to get those rebounds. Davis somehow held his feet in and knocks down the three. Up to eight points for Davis. That was a catch in the NFL and college. He kept both in. Tempo definitely at a much slower pace for Boston College, which they are content with. Here's Bickerstaff inside, no, then mighty at the rim, and he was affected by Bwai Coca. Other end, Stone is fouled. Oh, Antoine Davis, you said it, Eric. Nice catch here on the attempted steal by Zach. He has plenty of space and then lines up that three and hits it. Also, Jaden Stone on the far side drawing the foul. Stone's been one of those players, too, for Mike Davis this year and, and in years past to kind of help alleviate some of that pressure off of Antoine Davis. Jaden Stone, as we said, a career... I-15 in the game against Rochester. Played 30 games over the last two seasons at Grand Canyon University in Stone. Averaged about three and a half points a game, but a former McDonald's All-American nominee, and that's kind of a theme when you look at this roster. A lot of guys that started their career at high major programs that were pretty highly touted out of high school. Mike Davis kind of saying, look, there's a reason for that on a lot of these guys. So Instead trying to find lightning striking at a bottle here on, on one or two of them to pair with Davis, and he got a chance. Zachary, nice take. You know, we mentioned all the grad, grad transfers, six this year, eight in total, and 
tough to build a culture and a program with so much of that. He alluded to that, saying, hey, the first couple of years were a little hard, and then you got hit with the probationary period where you couldn't really do much. So this, this team is finally becoming the Mike Davis team that he wants and is trying to establish there at Detroit Mercy. Here's some of the players coming in from the portal on this Detroit Mercy team. And again, for some of these players, that might have been their second school. Someone like Jordan Phillips, who started at Arkansas before going to UT Arlington, or TJ Moss, who started his career at South Carolina, and a year at McNeese State before coming for a grad year here at Detroit Mercy. Zachary in the paint again. That one, no. And Davis, the rebound. It's continuing that point. Four players returning from last year. You got your three new freshmen. It's it's a building progress for Mike Davis. Davis shooting over Zachary and was affected at the rim. Chaz Kelly back the other way for Boston College. With a three-point lead under six remaining, Kelly couldn't finish at the rim. And then this is out of bounds, and in fact a foul was called on Boston College. They're going to get the foul on Kelly for reaching over the bat. Yeah, I think exactly that right here. Kelly's going to try to make a play to keep this ball, but puts an arm right there. You see that arm wrap around the body of TJ Moss, kind of drags him back, and that's what the official calls. So Detroit Mercy ball from under the bucket. Second foul on Chaz Kelly. And Armani Mighty also out of the game for Boston College. Pena and Metzen back in for Earl Grant. Seen the full court press a couple of times here from the Eagles. Davis around the screen. And what a flying rebound attempt that was by Arashma Parks into the game for the first time. And then Bill Covington Jr., one of our referees, went crashing into the cheerleaders. But looks to be okay and even has a smile as well. Arashma Parks just comes in. You see Benya was going into that far side along with Anderson. This was just trying to get out of the way there. <laughs> Nowhere to go on that one. Good hustle play there by Pena to try to keep that ball oh, he alive. stepped on. Yeah, it was, okay, so Pena stepped on Covington's shoe. Give a little thank you to the cheerleaders for, cheerleaders for placing the danger areas <laughs> in this building the first two games of the season. They had the thicker staff block on the other end, which got knocked into one of the cheerleaders on the other side. All smiles down there. They're all right. Certainly have a story out of it. <laughs> Look, they fly in the air, so I, I think they've, ha they've had difficult falls, more difficult falls than that one. That foul, by the way, on Anderson, his second and the seventh on Detroit Mercy, which sends Boston College to the line for the final 522 of this first half, but Pena can't hit. Those 101s is so important. you got to make them count. A couple of missed free throws for the Eagles today as well. 60% at the line. Davis trying to get around Bickerstaff. Kicks Anderson. Three ball is strong. And that rebound will stay here. Arashma Parks was once again in there with Bickerstaff. Yeah, it looked like it hit off the hand of Bickerstaff. Went out of play. Well, we've seen Detroit Mercy do a better job protecting that paint and not giving up so many defensive and offensive rebounds on either side of the floor. Bickerstaff may have lost a contact. It's like he got it back in and it's okay to carry on. It's always hard with sweaty eyes and getting that contact lens in. Let alone the pressure of having thousands of people staring at you. Foul on Pena on the drive by Jordan Phillips. It's a good job to just utilize the space. Davis is kind of floating around the top of the key, opens up that middle, and a good drive there by Jordan Phillips. We've seen him kind of drive strong to the rack as well. Try to get some points on the board for Detroit Mercy. So Phillips knocks down the free throw. Limited action at Arkansas as a freshman, played in seven games. And in the last two years at UT Arlington, where he averaged seven and a half points a game. 
for last year, as we said, just three games before the injury here at Detroit Mercy. Had an efficient day against Rochester, five for six from the field, two for three from the three-point line, second career double-double. Adds a long three. No good. And Arashma Parks has made an impact on the glass since coming into the game for Mike Davis. Extra pass. LeCreer lost it on the drive, and that is out of bounds. Stepped on the timeline. Yeah, so there's a good rotation of the ball by the Titans. That one just bounces off on the tip and looks like it is off the hand. And right back to Boston College it goes. Guy Ashton Langford back in for BC. Thought about it. Around for Bickerstaff and a foul called underneath. Arm was starting to extend for Bickerstaff, but it appeared he held up enough to draw the defensive foul. Yeah, you saw Rashma Parks just get there a little bit too late, tried to reposition himself when Bickerstaff uh, caught the ball inside the paint, just a little too late there on that adjustment. So that's what leads to a blocking foul more than a charge. If he stayed straight that first time and didn't move, that's definitely a charge going the other way. So Bickerstaff back to the line. Makes the first one. DJ Bickerstaff was just two of five at the foul line in the opener against Cornell. Last year, 66%. Remember AJ Oliver, who picked up three fouls in the first four minutes of this game. And he has been out ever since that point for Detroit Mercy. Short in the bench there for Mike Davis and Trying to get some more players, and that's why we see Parks out there now. Zachary has had the task against Davis most of the time. Moss thought about it. Eight to shoot on the drive. Off the window. Yes, and a foul. TJ Moss with an impressive take. Ends a three-and-a-half-minute drought without a field goal for Detroit. Of Donald Han Jr. trying to have his own Mike Mike moments at Boston College, and we will get to know him and more of the Boston College basketball team coming up at halftime, as well as conversations with both coaches, highlight stats, and plenty more. That is our halftime report coming up here on ACC Network Extra. You like Mike guy? I do. I mean, but you know, at the end of the movie, not to play spoiler, he I, doesn't really need the shoes. It's been 15 years. I think, oh, okay. I think the spoiler okay. alert. Sure. Right. Some, uh, some people forget to watch these great movies. You know, I think a lot of great basketball movies, Glory is another one. Now, right? Yeah, you can't true. have it's no sport. That's what, that's what makes it easier to watch, too, right? You can just be on a road trip and watching a movie. So, Mike Mike is a great movie, though. It's a one-point lead now for Detroit Mercy after the free throw from T.J. Moss. The 3.37 to go in the half. Pena out there on the jumper. And McLaughlin trying to go one-on-three for the rebound. But T.J. Moss was there again for the Titans. Stone in transition, got the three. That is 11 points here in the first half for Jaden Stone, who scored 15 in the opener. Yeah, he was a spark against Rochester. Anytime it felt like Detroit Mercy was falling into a little bit of a lapse offensively, Stone would hit a big bucket and get them going. He's doing that right now. Four-point lead for the Titans. Double team comes, and a foul is called on the reach-in on Arashma Parks. Another great move and a good feed on the near side from T.J. Moss. Had eyes up court the entire time. Another big three. You can see it. Three white jerseys all in the area of the ball. And Stone just slips a little bit and ends up wide open for the three-pointer. Great start today for Jaden Stone and Detroit Mercy, who has answered Boston College's run with a 6 nothing run of their own. It's been a streaky game. We've seen Boston College five of seven from the floor. Now one for their last seven from the floor. Except that starting one for nine. Yeah. Another rebound. Zachary is good. Big rebound. Massive three. The Seagulls back within one. CBC kind of upping the tempo defensively now, getting players as soon as they come out. And this is turned over, and we'll go back to Boston College. 
You're just joining us, Prince Alife, who had such an impressive opener. Uh, this play earlier kind of came down awkwardly. Prince Alife will not return, is the word from the Boston College Athletic Communications Department. Donald Hand Jr., who was also injured earlier in the game, he has returned. He has not yet appeared in the game, but is on the Boston College bench and is available. And now some precipitation on the floor, so they will get that sorted out here with 2.48 to go in the first. We've seen C.J. Pena step up, and we've seen McLaughlin check in just now in the last couple of minutes. So D.C. trying to find that replacement for Elite Bay, but they've done a good job just trying to keep the tempo and keep this one closed. Detroit Mercy has done a an even better job just kind of not letting the the crowd and the atmosphere kind of get to them. And they've come to this game against Boston College ready to play, not phased by the ACC opponent in front of them. A lot of folks maybe have the day off today for Veterans Day have come out. Some families as well. Great to see. Again, we salute all the veterans who may be watching out there and thank everyone for their service to our nation and allow us to enjoy basketball games also worth noting there's Demar Langford who was in the layup line pregame and warmed up was expected to be a game time decision for Boston College today we have not seen him yet there is Kelly on the jumper so at some point here as Bickerstaff going for the rebound out of bounds it'll go to Detroit Mercy BC is down Quentin Pose down Demar Langford who we have not seen down Prince Elite Bay and we won't say down Donald Hand Jr. yet, but we have not seen him return to the floor. And at some point, it just becomes a numbers crunch of a lot of different bodies missing for Earl Grant. Yeah, and that's when you kind of put the people out there in a, in a position where they're playing a lot of minutes and you, you worry about kind of putting a lot of mileage in non-conference play, right? Especially with this season, the basketball season being so long, extending from now up until March. So you want to be smart about the rotation you're using and, and the bench, the bodies on the bench that you're taking off. That's why I'm a little surprised Grant is going with the full court kind of man to man. Picking up a little bit beyond half court as we've seen. So one point lead Detroit Mercy. And they've done it. Despite just eight points from Davis, a lot of it's been stoned. It's off the mark on the two. That was nearly turned over, but kept alive. And now it's Bickerstaff. 20 to shoot for Boston College. Picked up the dribble. Needs help from Zachary. Kelly inside for Bickerstaff. Making his move against Parks. Goes up right hand. Good in the foul. It's a really great job, just not rushing the play by TJ Bickerstaff. A couple times he gets the end shirt, doesn't have any options, doesn't kick it out this time. He decides, hey, hold on, let me create the space. Nothing there, nothing there. Let me just put it up. Gets the contact, gets the and one. That's a big play by TJ Bickerstaff. And that, by the way, is the third foul on Arashma Parks. So three fouls on AJ Oliver, three fouls on Arashma Parks for Detroit Mercy. A lot of their size and foul trouble as we get close to halftime here. We saw Oliver head to the bench early on with those three fouls. You'll see Parks head to the bench now. And one good for Bickerstaff. Nine points for TJ Bickerstaff. And now here are the Eagles putting on the full court. And it works with Metzen. And he's up and missed at the rim. Great effort from Metzen creating the turnover and then couldn't finish at the rim and it's a two-point lead Boston College with 94 seconds remaining first half Davis got around Zachary floater is good it's another double figure game for Antoine Davis 113 consecutive games with at least 10 and Davis, who's actually grimacing a little bit for Detroit Mercy on defense here. Zachary can't hit the runner. Davis toughing it out right now for the Titans. Phillips caught it in stride. Got rid of it. Moss for three. No good. Rebound on the ground and kept alive by Kelly. With under a minute remaining first half. 
in for three. Boston College, five of 14 from behind the arc. Quickly the other way in transition. Jordan Phillips has six points, and Mike Davis will use the timeout. Four in a row for Detroit Mercy, and a two-point lead again for the Titans. That's what makes Davis so dangerous. Give him a little bit of space, and he'll cash in. Zachary's done a great job defensively on one of the best scorers in NCAA basketball, and he just moves to the left, gets a little bit of space, fades away, and hits that shot. He said at 113, chasing Chris Clemens and Lionel Simmons for the all-time record. He's now third alone, passing Danny Ainge for consecutive games with double figures scoring. And that is, as you see there, the all-time NCAA record. He's got a chance to blow that away. So you see Davis there at a follow-through right there. It's kind of in between Zachary and Spitta. I don't know if you can see with the yellow shoes in between, but steps right on the ref's foot. So Grimace is on the way up the court. It's kind of what you were alluding to is just shaking it off on that last play. A dangerous game today for the yeah, referees. That was been. Raymond Styons who got the foot stepped on. Bill Covington Jr. had a foot stepped on earlier. Everybody's got to be on high alert today. 43.6 seconds to go. First half, two-point lead Detroit Mercy. Out of the UDM timeout. Zachary on the drive. Gave it up, Metzen. Three ball is good. Mason Metzen with 11 points here in the first half. And Boston College takes the lead back by one. Shot clock is off here at the end of the first half. And that was nearly thrown away. Kyle Laguerre tracked it down. Six to shoot. In Davis's hand. Step back three. Way short. Rebound underneath. And the follow is good. And that's how the first half comes to an end. So the rebound inside after the miss. And Detroit Mercy will take a one-point lead to the halftime break. Yeah, Jaden Stone's going to follow the shot. Great defense by Madsen to fall. Now, Donald Hand Jr., who we saw, was injured earlier in the game, went to the locker room, came back. He is on the bench right now. We're told he is available to come back, though we have not seen him on the floor since. So the Eagles a little bit shorthanded. Down a point. Detroit Mercy has toughed it out to this point. And we begin second half from the Conti Forum. And appreciate you joining us here on this Friday afternoon. And that is an offensive foul. And Detroit Mercy is going to start to have some foul issues here. Because that is a moving hit against Demisi Anderson. And that is his third foul. So Detroit Mercy has three players with three fouls. Lewis Oliver, Anderson, and Parks all with three. Ashton Lankford pull up jumper and the Eagles back on top. Yeah, you're talking about size out on the court right now for Detroit Mercy. You see Parks, Oliver Anderson, all bigger players here for the Titans that are going to be sitting on the bench sporadically here during the second half to try to limit their fouls and hope that they don't get you know fouled out. Amazingly, that was the first points of the game for Makai Ashton Lankford for Boston College. Stone was inside the arc. Can't make the two, but an offensive rebound belongs to Anderson. And now Anderson's got it back. And he's got a three. Demisi Anderson, his first points of the game are three big ones. It's a Detroit Mercy team that last year was seventh in the nation, first in the Horizon League in three-point field goals made, and 24th in three-point field goal percentage. Ashton Langford to answer. And a quick five to begin the second half. The response just said, hey, it's first couple points. Now he's starting off the second half with a little bit of a streak here. in there defensively against Phillips. Davis just grabbed it over Zachary. No look pass Anderson. Straight on. And no good. Offensive rebound though. A.J. Oliver. Anderson trying again. And he's got it. Demisi Anderson with back-to-back -back triples. Now he hit five against Rochester. Had 17 points. He can shoot the three ball. We told you even though these guys are big, they're good at shooting. Zachary spinning in the lane. And is fouled. Said it. 
tops in the nation last year in three-point shooting. I asked Mike Davis if that's kind of the game plan this year. That's Anderson for three, and then Ashton Langford, a beautiful shot. That last foul went against Jaden Stone. That is his second. And it sends Jaden Zachary to the line. Seven first half points for the Boston College sophomore. I've seen BC take it to the rack a couple of times and try to adjust which arm they're finishing with. I'd like to see Zachary just go up with the left on that one. No, no need to adjust it on the way up or mid, mid jump. Nine for Zachary. We are tied 40 apiece. Two minutes in, second half. Zachary picks it off clean to the bucket. Lost it momentarily as Anderson got a piece. But it's around for Ashton Lankford who couldn't control it. And it's out of bounds. Another good defense by Zachary. We talked about kind of Earl Grant utilizing the full court press or the man-to-man -man press. And it's benefited him defensively on multiple occasions. We've seen BC pick up at half court. We've seen Boston College pick up full court a bit. Here they try to guard the inbound and then retreat a few steps. And Detroit Mercy in a tie game here. Each team 1-0 to start the year. Davis waited, then on the second effort is off the mark from three. Phillips grabs the rebound though. More offensive board here for Detroit Mercy in the second half. And that three is good. Jaden Stone for the second game in a row has a career high. That's 16 points for the Grand Canyon University transfer. Huge, just huge. Good good eye position there to see that he was still inside that corner with plenty of room. Lines up the three. Quick shot by Stone. Pena for three. That's too strong. Three-point lead, Detroit Mercy. Davis got the switch and a blocking foul against Ashton Langford. Yeah, Langford caught flat-footed there defensively. Commits the foul. You see here, right there, just a little bit of a drive. And then Stone, you talked about it, just having a great start to his career with Detroit Mercy. Good look there to make sure he was inbound. And then the quick release. The team that likes to shoot the three ball, they were really good at it when they fall down. Lewis, that's the third foul on Makai Ashton Langford. Earl Grant is going to leave him out there. And he may well have to because at this point, Boston College needs his scoring. Long two, Oliver, no. And here comes Ashton Langford on the run. Right down the lane. Slips yes. by to the bucket. Seven in the second half for Makai. Just parted the seas there and found the lane, took it to the rack. Other end, Phillips gives it up to a wide open three. It's Oliver. First points of the game for A.J. Oliver. After playing just four minutes. And then after the fact, there was a foul call, I believe. Looks like a technical foul is being assessed to A.J. Oliver. So, a oh, flop on A.J. Oliver. So they do indeed call the foul. This is one of the new rules in college basketball this year. There is no more warning for a flop. It is an immediate technical. So one free throw, and it's made by Madsen. But yeah, the official came over and said it was one free throw for the flop. Looks like he had some words to say there after the shot went down. So, the administrative technical, which again does not count as a personal foul, which is important because remember Oliver is playing with three. So he does get his first points of the game, but then Madsen makes the free throw at the other end. Three point lead Detroit Mercy. Ashton Langford got up in the air, tried to throw the pass with his left hand, and then a foul here. And that was McLaughlin who picks up the foul. Another good hustle play there by Stone as well to get involved in that play. The extra effort to try to create the turnover. Looks like he's going to go back to Detroit Mercy. 
pour liquid on the floor so we get it cleaned up. We had some precipitation on the floor today. It is a scorcher for this time of year in the Boston area outside, over 60 degrees in the second day in a row. 46-43. Detroit Mercy, four for eight from the floor to start this second half. BC, three for four. Davis gave it up. Anderson, three ball is good. Demisi Anderson with three second half triples. Antoine Davis just kind of looked at him and said, shoot it. And he shot it and he put his arms up. Davis did, knowing immediately it was going in. Largest lead of the game for the Titans at six. And then a foul at the other end on the drive from Jaden Zachary. And Anderson is down on the floor right now. We'll check on him when we come back. He's been huge in the second half for Detroit Mercy. Selling your last sequence here. Just a nice job by Davis to now start to use his passing ability to help out Anderson. And then on the other end, Anderson commits his fourth foul. And then right there, ooh, awkwardly down onto the floor. Yeah, just tangled up with Zachary there. But you talked about Davis and just his vision today, right? We, I'm not going to lie, a lot of people think he's going to go into a game going 25 plus, 30 plus. But today especially has been unselfish play, finding the open player, trying to guide his teammates into the right position. You know, a lot of players, a lot of people think that Davis might be a second round, maybe a late round pick in the second round or might get signed to a G League contract. He continues to work on his game. He'll go up those rankings and maybe on somebody's board. One thing that Mike Davis talked about in our call this week was one of the things that Davis was focused on in the offseason was bulking up a little bit, gained 10 pounds, said he probably still has even 10 more pounds to go. Here's McLaughlin, nice slip, and a pass from Ashton Langford. Remember, Mackay is playing this second half on three fouls for Boston College. Detroit Mercy in their own foul trouble with three with three, including Anderson, who has four fouls. Parks is one of those with three, waited for McLaughlin, and draws the foul. Great job here for Ashton Langford on the drop pass, and then McLaughlin on the finish. That's kind of what BC wants, especially from the point guard. Draw the defender and the help side D. Open up the lane for your forward or your center to get through. I rainbow. Free throw is good from Arashma Parks. You see Anderson trying to test out that leg, see if he is okay to try to make a return. He probably was going to come out anyway on four fouls, but that's an important piece. Three three-pointers in this second half. Detroit Mercy is five for seven from three in the second half, 10 of 22 for the game. And two free throws for Parks. His first two points. Detroit Mercy has done really well. Is just force BC into, into some tough shots. BC has not shot over 40% at all in this game yet. They're stuck at 39 right now. Jazz Kelly back into the game for Boston College. Ashton Langford, well short, trying on the pull-up runner. Moss transition. Got rid of it to Oliver. Into the paint, double team comes. Has to get rid of it. Around for Moss. Spinning in the lane. And is blocked. Nice job by Ashton Lankford to stay with the play here despite all the histrionics. Yeah, smart move not to buy into all that. Stay with the ball. A little contact there at the end of the play by Parks. Ten to shoot. Detroit Mercy up 51-45. That will stay here. With six to shoot for the Titans. And you got to be impressed with Zachary's defense on Davis. You know, he's up into double digits, but Zachary has forced that ball out of his hands a lot of the time. Davis, two to shoot. Got it off. Was short. Eagles have held Antoine Davis without a point in the second half. Flying in on the rebound. T.J. Kickerstaff, 11 points for Boston College. Got to get him going. Use him in the post to try to get some balls on the outside. Open up some shots. He's been big defensively and on the offensive boards. 
It's already a double-double again for Bickerstaff. Nearly has a double-double of just offensive rebounds. That is a hell of ball, and that is going to Boston College. Well, Jaden Zachary, his defense going to lead to some offense here. Good job staying in position in front of Davis. And then Bickerstaff's going to feed him, feed Zachary in transition. And then Bickerstaff with the follow. It's a great job. And then on that last play, it's Chaz Kelly with the active hands to create the turnover. Eight of the ten rebounds for T.J. Bickerstaff on the offensive glass. Zachary lost it out of bounds. Going to Detroit Mercy. Both teams have done a really good job just kind of confusing the offense coming down the court. Detroit Mercy and Boston College. We've seen a lot of kind of sloppy play where balls just kind of hit off the hands and they go out of out of play. It's, it's credit to that defense. It, it makes you think twice about what pass you're going to make or if you even have that open shot selection. Both teams have shot the ball relatively well here in this second half. Just not a whole lot of attempts. Detroit Mercy, 5 of 11. All five of those from downtown. Austin College, 5 for 8. Anderson playing with four fouls. And he has 11 points. All of them in the second half. That's a good job by Detroit Mercy. Expo expo exposing the zone there for the Eagles. Finding that open soft spot. A nice little touch shot by Anderson. Zachary into the corner. Nets in three. Phillips on the rebound. And a foul will go against Boston College. Second foul on McLaughlin. Trying to track down that rebound. Looked like it was going to pop out of the hands there, so he tried to reach in for it. Unfortunately, just got too much hand contact and called for a foul there. Thank your pardon. Actually, the third foul on McLaughlin for Boston College. Phillips backing down Bickerstaff. Phillips short. Emma Glockton, a powerful rebound. Kelly's run the point quite a bit. Again, we have not seen Donald Hand since the injury in the first half. He is on the Boston College bench, but has not yet appeared back in the game. Metzen for three. That is good. Mason Metzen with a BC high 15, including four three-pointers. Bakerstaff getting a hand on that, drawing the defense in, opening up that shot for Madsen. A little fake from LeCreer. Stone on the drive. Oh, what a move. Jaden Stone up to 18 points. Quickly down the other NBC. Three ball, Kelly is too strong. Stone to answer. On the other end was short on the long two. Offensive rebound though, Phillips. Stone on the drive, and he got it! Jaden Stone, 20 points to lead Detroit Mercy. And this is the largest lead of the game for the Titans. Zachary, hand off McLaughlin, goes up strong, but can't hit it. And then it's lost out of bounds by Stone, so Boston College will keep possession. Detroit Mercy, without a point from their leading score in the second half, led by 20 from Jake Stone. Stone. Jaden Stone played two years at Grand Canyon before transferring over to Detroit Mercy. He had an unexpected loss in his family last year. Wants to be a little closer to home. And he's found a good place here at Detroit Mercy under Mike Davis right now, finding his role in this offense. The leading scorer for both teams. Set a career high with 15 points in the opener against Rochester. Has exceeded it already today with 20. 
And the fact that Detroit Mercy is holding up without points from Davis in this second half is perhaps the biggest surprise of the afternoon. But even in saying that, credit Davis with three assists in this second half. Doesn't get talked about as much as his scoring, but Davis is sixth all time in assists. They're still in missing program history as well. Sorry, Eric, but still missing Gerald Liddell trying to figure out when they're gonna get him back into the lineup. Ashton Lankford to the bucket. That one went through. That got stuck on top of the rim, but count the bucket for Ashton Langford, who has all nine of his points in the second half for Boston College. And the Eagles are within five. Anderson there just goes up to fix the net instead of waiting for them to come fix it. Trying to get the play going, keep that momentum going for Absolutely. Detroit Mercy. Remember, Anderson's playing with four fouls. Parks and Oliver with three for Detroit Mercy. Ashton Langford and McLaughlin playing with three fouls for Boston College. 10.40 remaining, five-point lead for the visitors. Davis for three. He's good. Antoine Davis with his first points of the second half. And Detroit Mercy with its largest lead of the game now at eight. This is what Mike Davis wants. You want to be able to space the ball around, get different looks to your offense. Pena on the drive. Got it off the window. CJ Pena with five following up his 15 points in his Boston College debut on Monday. Donnie Morris, assistant coach for Detroit Mercy, is working these guys out before the game. It was an intense workout. Coco blocked. McLaughlin was there. And this one is saved by Zachary. Eagles trying to run a bit. Madsen gave it up. Ashton Lakeford for three. Off back iron. And then a foul on the rebound against Anderson. And that's the fifth foul if it's indeed on Anderson, which it is. That's a big guard, their big four that you're missing now for Davis. It's huge defense here by McLaughlin to come in, block that ball onto the shot, and then stay with it on that follow-up attempt there by Phillips. But this is huge for Boston College to get Anderson out of the game at 6'7". That's a big presence down low, and his three-point shooting ability is also one of the best on this team for the Titans. So you take out two, two big components on your offense and your defense. What a second half for Anderson at 11 of UDM's 26 points in the second half, but now is out with five fouls. Zachary on the drive. Two in a row for Boston College, and the Eagles are back within four. Well, in that time, he goes straight up. He absorbs the contact, goes straight up with the right hand. He didn't try to adjust to the left or try to spin away his body. Just goes straight up to the rack, put that ball in the hoop. Zachary matching his output on Monday with 11 points so far this afternoon. Davis launching. That was well short. And that one out of bounds, off the shot. And the Eagles have possession. It's not a rhythm shot that you see Mike Davis on the... Detroit Mercy bench. You want to find and set up your offense. It's been what's working for you so far here in the second half. Establish the set play and find the open player. You don't got to rush anything. You still have a lead here. Once again, a nice environment. Inside Conti Forum is the Let's Go Eagles chant emerging from the student section. Wrapping around behind us. have scored the last six. They needed their big time scorer. Ashton Lake for the life for the second half. Took a while to get up. Yeah, just staying in position, staying with the play. Defense beats the offense. It's been kind of the theme here for the Eagles today. Zachary with a great finish, strong finish. And then Ashton Langford rocking Connie Forum. 
Sometimes you need your stars to step up in games like this, and even if it isn't a perfect performance all the way through, Makai Ash and Langford, a little bit of foul trouble in the first half, did not score in the opening stanza, but has 11 points on 5 of 11 shooting all in the second half, and remember, doing it all with three fouls well, at just this point. A distribution of wealth as well, Madsen up on points as well for Boston College. He's had some big threes, up to 15 points, leading the team. All-around effort for the Eagles. That's what they're going to need to finish this one off. Remember, Detroit Mercy is without Demise Anderson, who fouled out of this game after 11 points here in the second half. Two-point lead, Detroit Mercy. You see on a 6-0 run. Seven to shoot. Stone leading the Titans in scoring. Three ball, not there, and it's tipped home. Kyle LeGreer called it. It's his first two of the game. Yeah, played in eight minutes against Rochester. He didn't see a lot of action in that game, but was impactful when he was out on the floor. Zachary on the drive, got it. 13 for Jake. Zachary just playing with a whole lot of confidence to start this season. Especially in this game, it's just progressed. You see him kind of take it with more confidence to the hoop and drawing the contact. Davis, elbow, jumper, no. All things considered, Boston College has done a nice job on Davis. And a foul here with Ashton Langford charging down the floor. Foul on Antoine Davis. Two-point lead, Detroit Mercy. 7.42 to go. this week and one of the things he said was the reason he wanted to schedule this game he started trying to schedule it a couple of years ago was because he was good friends with Boston College assistant coach Chris Cheeks who was on the previous staff with Jim Christian Chris Cheeks who passed away earlier this year so Mike Davis said this was going to be an emotional trip in for him last year his team played at Northeastern he had Chris in to talk to his team and means a lot for Mike Davis to be here they didn't get this game set up while Chris Cheeks was on the staff, but it means a lot for him to be here, and he said it was going to be a, a heavy couple of days for him. Absolutely an honor to, to come back here to Boston and play where Chris Cheeks was able to coach, and just two longtime friends. He was really emotional in our conversation this week, and was able to kind of sit around the arena today on the BC bench by the locker rooms in the tunnel, and just kind of take it all in, and got to ask him about it. He said it's just, it's just good to be here. Whistle here and a foul called on the Boston College and after the Zachary miss from three. So 62-60, Detroit Mercy. And that foul goes against Makai Ashton Langford and that is his fourth. So 7-17 to go. Ashton Langford was on three fouls for a while and played well, but now has to come out with four. And that will be something for Earl Grant to manage the rest of the way. Eagles, remember, are already down three starters today. DeMar Langford and Quinn Post did not play. And Alip Bay, who's out for the game with injury early. That was blocked at the rim. And Zachary on the run. Chaz Kelly on the drive. The loader is too strong. And Arashma Parks has the rebound. Two-point lead, Detroit Mercy. Looking for a first win over an ACC school since 1993. And we started to make this point on Davis. He's going to get his points. This is someone who has been a first-team All-Horizon League player four years in a row. He averaged 24 points last year. It's basically his career average. So the fact that he's at 13 on 5 of 15 shooting and just three threes, while double-digit points, points doesn't necessarily feel like a win it kind of is absolutely and you talked about the defense Zachary's done a great job it's the first time since 2000 since 2020 December 20th to 2020 that he's stuck at this at this level hasn't scored Zachary on the drive it stays out Titans back on the run but career stopped Phillips the drive and it's an offensive foul Yeah, 
That looked like the feet weren't set there. Another great job by Benya. Getting into the paint, setting his body up, stops his movement right there. You see him kind of just set up, stay still, and draws the contact outside that circle. Another great job. And Zachary as well, kind of staying on that side, riding the side, not pulling off and peeling off to, to play help side defense somewhere else. Just stays there to create some havoc. Six, 15 to go. It's been a two point game for a while. DC has yet to tie it. Zachary gives it off. Bickerstaff caught it, tried to get rid of it out to Kelly after he was off balance. And it was taken away. TJ Moss stripped to the other end, and it is BC ball. This is Zachary just coming back on the recovery. It's a great move here to cut to the right, but and then Zachary just stays with it. Active hands again, causes the turnover to go out of bounds. Now you want to see BCU set something up offensively, try to get this game tied or take the lead. Neither team has scored in more than two minutes. Turned over, Antoine Davis with an excellent read of the pass. His first points in quite a while. It's up to 15 for the game. Four point lead, Detroit Mercy. Pena open three. Another rebound to Rashma Parks, his seventh. Davis, pass was tipped, but ends up right with TJ Moss. Seven to shoot, Moss on the drive, finger roll no, rebound and a foul with Parks going for the rebound and TJ Bickerstaff is called. He said Antoine Davis reads the play and this one's a good feed inside by TJ Moss, that's a foul on Bickerstaff. But this is the Antoine Davis steal, Jazz Kelly just doesn't see him kind of reading the lane there to get back on. Madsen. And that's one of those, it's a learning moment as a freshman. Trying to get that pass through to Madsen with a lot of traffic in the way. In the last two sequences for BC, it's been kind of sloppy passes. They're trying to get out of trouble and really passing to no one. So we want to clean that up. By the way, both teams now are at six fouls. So it'll be free throws the rest of the way. Davis, catch and shoot. No good from three. Lead is four. Eagles have cut it to two, but Detroit Mercy has yet to give it up. I like this, Earl Grant setting up a play, calling a play from the sideline, getting them settled up and set in rotation. Zachary, five to shoot, lost the handle. Davis on the run, and the foul is on the floor against Madsen, who is not set. Looked like Madsen really wanted to get set before his feet wanted him to get set. So Zachary on that end just loses it going into traffic. But then here, Madsen wants to get set, just continues to go backwards, and that draws him to the floor. First time to the foul line for Antoine Davis. Another note on his remarkable career we haven't talked about yet. He is an 89% career free throw shooter which is in the top 25 all-time college basketball history, but he missed. They call that the announcer, James. <laughs> Up to 486 on assists as well. This year, or last game against Rochester had nine assists, so trying to distribute the ball more. You know, Eric, Mike Davis sitting at 398 in career wins. Looking for 399 here on the road against Boston College. Missing some free throws from his son by Antoine Davis won't help though. Amazing. Jaden Stone back in the game for Detroit Mercy, by the way. He's been out for a bit. Zachary, 10 to shoot. Falling away. Couldn't hit. Eagles are all of their last five from the floor. 
three turnovers for the Eagles in the last 4.06. It's a very similar spot to where Cornell built its largest lead of the game on Monday night. They led 71-65. Three ball, Phillips was too strong. Rebound is down to Madsen. Out in front, Pena, but it's too far on the pass. Madsen trying to throw a home run and just let him a bit too far. Detroit Mercy Ball with the lead when we come back. What my, our camera guy Joey just getting out of the way. Some good moves here, you see. Right there, Ooh. just avoids it. And how about Pena as well, kind of sidestepping. Make sure nobody gets no, out there. he's good. He's all right. <laughs> Make sure that camera's good. Joey's been involved in some action these first couple <laughs> of games. That's why you got the rolling chair. So, 3.30 to go in this second half, 64-60. Both teams all of a sudden have gone quiet. We have not had a point in two minutes and 11 seconds. Boston College has not scored in almost five minutes. It's still a four point game. Detroit Mercy has basically led wire to wire here in the second half. They're trying to get Davis open. Seven to shoot. Davis got it, but immediately had to get rid of it to Parks. Just two to shoot. Davis for three is off the mark. Excellent defensive sequence by BC. And now Zachary on the run. And an offensive foul. Looked like LeGreer set himself up right outside that circle and got his body in position right in front of Zachary as Zachary moves to see Greer just might have gotten there a second soon. Baby was still sliding a little. But Zachary with the head of steam does not get the benefit of the doubt on the call. So it's still at four. And we're at three minutes without a point either way with 2.40 to go. Seven to shoot. Phillips against Zachary. Kept it alive. A flying shot is off Detroit and out of bounds. Been some ugly sequences the last couple of possessions. And this one you can see kind of a wrap around right there. Grabbing Zachary was Phillips just trying to get that angle on the inside. Ball bounces out, so fortunately for the Eagles, ball still goes to them, but Detroit Mercy, they're so quick that sometimes they don't even need to put the arm out, just get around the defender and, and get across. So avoid getting called for a foul by just going straight to the hoop. Detroit Mercy is one of its last nine from the floor. BC 0 for its last five. Five turnovers over the last six minutes. Jackets come off for all Grant. He's ready. He means business. Ashton Langford's out there with four fouls for BC. Bickerstaff spinning inside. Off the window, no, but it's out of bounds off Detroit. Mercy. Marashma Parks up to a career high. Eight rebounds. That's exactly what they need from him. Getting on the boards, cleaning up any secondary chances on the defensive end. Six to shoot for BC. So Earl Grant is going to use a timeout and draw something up. Back in 30 seconds with Detroit Mercy up by four. To go. We have not had a point in three minutes and 39 seconds. Boston College does not have a point for more than six minutes. But all can be forgiven on one drawn up play. Six seconds remaining on the timer. Both teams in foul trouble. Anderson is fouled out for Detroit Mercy. Makai Ashton Langford, the big one for BC, is back in there with four fouls. For BC, without Prince of League Bay, who got lost early on in this game. Donald Han Jr. is available, but hasn't been used. And then you're in foul trouble, so you should kind of stick with the guys you got. So this is how BC is going to finish the game with 2.02 left. By the way, it was a reset of the shot clock here. Reset to 20 
So 20 seconds remaining on the timer. 2.02 to go in regulation. Detroit Mercy 64, Boston College 60. Zachary off the handoff from Bickerstaff. Into the lane, and he is fouled. They are continuing to ride Jaden Zachary. It has not worked necessarily for field goals, but he is clawing his way at the line where he is four for four this afternoon. He had a great year last year, 57 steals as a freshman, was tied with Dana Barrows, the most by BC freshman. Dana Barrows doing a great job here in the local area, building up AAU programs with a new gym. And a miss at the rim. Boston College's last basket was Jaden Zachary hitting a jumper at 8.06 remaining. Detroit Mercy's only basket in that sequence was at 5.41 remaining on the layup from Davis. One of two at the line, three-point game. When I think the frustration on Detroit Mercy's side sideline is that there wasn't no count, there wasn't a visible count that they could see or when the start was counting or when the start had started counting. You can see right yeah, there the five. official. Yeah, five motions with the arm. So the Eagles, great chance. Down by three. Ashton Langford thought about it. On the drive, Makai gives it off. Bigger staff. smart move go give the ball to Jaden Stone put it in his hand allow Davis to move around and get free 90 seconds left this match. Davis's hands with 10 Davis got his man in the air three ball bounces high knocked out of bounds Fourth foul on Parks. This is good elevation there by Madsen. I don't think it should be on Parks. Actually, it should be on Phillips. But this is Langford. Ashton Langford, a great cut. And Bickerstaff, a great adjustment there at the hoop with the defender coming at him to go right to left and put it off the glass and in. Down to the wire again. Madsen, remember, is at the line. Mike Davis is going to use the timeout. 1.18 to go. Mason Madsen is at the line. Boston College down a point. Back in 30 seconds. Here's the thing about the good times. In the Game late. The Eagles called on their freshman, Prince Aligme, who hit the game winner with nine tenths of a second remaining. The prayer from Manon did not go and gave Boston College a 1-0 start to the season. And it has been a dogfight once again to the finish in game number two. One eighteen to go. The Eagles have not led this game since the 1849 mark of the second half, but they led 38-37. It's been a great game for the Eagles and Detroit Mercy going back and forth from the start. Each team going on runs. We've got to see Antoine Davis, who's one of the best scorers in college basketball, but you also see the foul trouble that Detroit Mercy has found themselves in, losing Demise Anderson in the second half. Arashma Parks and A.J. Oliver at 4-3, and three respectively. They need to finish strong with 118 remaining here in this game. Mason Madsen. Boston College's leading scorer today with 15 points is at the line. BC is down by one. In and out on the front end of a one and one. And Detroit Mercy remains up. One oh five left. Stone 
to the basket. Got it. Jaden Stone, 22 points. It's a three point lead. And now Bill Covington Jr. has called for time as TJ Bickerstaff is keeled over in pain. That looked like cramp it up there for Bickerstaff. Get some assistance over to the BC sideline. Big presence in the paint that can head over to the BC bench. You see right there, just goes up and immediately grabs at that left leg. Kind of locked up on him. You certainly hope that Bickerstaff is okay. If he is out and cannot return, Boston College would be down four starters plus one of their key bench pieces, Hand, who while we were told is available, we have not seen. So we have to assume is not at the moment. 55.9 to go, Eagles are down three. Each team just one of its last seven from the floor. Ashton Langford on the drive to the bucket, no but a foul. Plenty of time left for the Eagles to take the play. And you see Ash Langford kind of take his time, wait for the play to develop. Certainly did not need the three yet. That foul was on Kyle LeGreer, the junior. He that was, by the way, the ninth team foul on Detroit Mercy. You see nine for 15 at the free throw line. It's a big difference in this game, which is decided by three points right now. Big one from Ashton Langford. Matching his total of 12 points from the opener. All of it in the second half. Remember playing with four fouls. Two for two at the line. BC will use the timeout. Down to a one point game again with under 40 seconds remaining. This is where if you're BC, you get a big stop. You have plenty of time left to make a chance. Even if, you, if they draw down, if Detroit Mercy draws down the shot clock, you have about a good 10 seconds left in difference. Do you make the stop or you give up a shot? Unless it's a three, then it puts you in a difficult stop, in a, in a difficult spot. But if you're able to stop them or hold them to a two, it's a one possession game and you have plenty of time to respond. A couple of timeouts as well. One timeout left for the Eagles. To reset, this has been as even as it gets. Detroit Mercy led Boston College by one at the half. Each team has scored 32 times in the second half. The foul situation again, Ashton Langford playing with four for Boston College. Detroit Mercy has been without Demise Anderson since midway through the second half. Parks was just called for his fourth foul. It has not been an offensive clinic to the end, but it has remained close. BC has gotten within two, has gotten within one, but has yet to tie or get the lead back since the 1849 mark of the second half. And Antoine Davis, 15 points. He's grinded for each one of those points. Remember on this last sequence where BC was able to full court trap, Detroit Mercy was called for five seconds. Into Stone, and a foul was called away from the ball against Madsen. Third foul against Mason Madsen. Free throws coming up. That was the ninth team foul on Boston College. Good thing .6 seconds came off the clock there. And this ball is going to move into the front court at the free throw line. So it actually benefits BC that time isn't wasted here on this, on this inbound play from Detroit Mercy. So perhaps you trade a couple of points for time. We'll see here Jordan Phillips. The 6 of 8 at the foul line in the opener on Tuesday. Missed. Crucial misses on both ends today. About 11 second difference between the game and the shot clock. Zachary 
on the drive. Pull up jumper. He missed. Rebound. Mark Lockton with a huge board. Nets it for three. rebound by McLaughlin who finds Makai Ashton Langford and nets it with his biggest shot as an eagle. During, during that last time out, Corey McRae was talking to McLaughlin about, hey, let's go, you got this, right? Hey, giving him some confidence in the motivation. That's a huge rebound on the offensive end to keep that play alive. And how about Mason Madsen? He had a career high, 19 points against Eastern Carolina in his time in Cincinnati. He's a leading scorer tonight for Boston College. Fifth three-pointer of the game for Mason Madsen. And he is now one shy of a career high. Unselfish play for Boston College there. So many leaders could take that chance. McLaughlin could go for the putback. Ashton Langford could go for the for the three. They eat unselfish basketball to find the junior, new player to the program, into the, into the culture. And you give it to Madsen, who's had the hot hand all day long. This crowd's going to get lit for the last 15-3. Two-point lead. Detroit Mercy has a timeout, as does Boston College. Kyle LeGreer will inbound. BC leads by two. If you're BC, you got to guard the three-point line. You're okay with the two, not a three. Ten seconds remaining. LeGreer calling out signals. Five seconds remaining. On the drive. And the bucket. It's off. Well, you said it, Eric. Defense is a staple of Earl Grant, and Pena, moving into position, draws the foul and gets the ball back for Boston College. Boston College takes Davis away, takes Stone away. And Boston College will take a timeout. I mean, you have to think that that was not the design by Detroit Mercy. But credit Boston College for taking away the top few options for the Titans. Let's look one more time at this last sequence. Starting on the Boston College end from the offensive rebound of the Madsen three. Again, just Madsen finds himself in a spot that he's been so successful in his career. Hits that three-pointer, and then on the defensive side of the ball, it's C.J. Benya for Boston College coming over on the help side D as Madsen gets beat, draws the blocking foul, excuse me, gets the charging call, and A.J. Oliver is out of position there on that last play, so Mike Davis is giving him an earful in that last timeout. Wanted to make sure that coming out of this timeout, you get the right play. 3.1, you got to foul immediately. Make sure that ball doesn't get down court or by your last line of defense. Let's take a look at this one more time. Davis coming around the screen there after LeGreer was already on the drive. So you credit Zachary for taking Detroit Mercy's top option out of the play. So now 3.1 to go. Eagles are up by two. play, you actually saw where Phillips was supposed to go. He drew the attention of C.J. Pena to the left and opened up the lane right there for Phillips, but he went opposite to the three-point line. Pena will inbound. Detroit Mercy will not guard the ball. Got a foul immediately. Ashton Lankford. They get it in, and the foul from LeGreer. 
Makai Ashton Langford is two free throws away from clinching it. How about that after he dishes off the pass, the game winner against Cornell. By the way, second, yeah, second game in a row. It's just beautiful basketball. Two for two at the line today. Fourteen second half points for Makai Ashton Langford. Should seal it. Fifteen for Makai Ashton Langford. Another dog bite to the end. But Boston College survives again. Boston College did not 